Professor Sabo, good morning to everyone. On behalf of Professor Ancochea and myself, we are privileged to participate in this UNICA seminar organized by University Semmelweis. Uh, it is a personal honor, especially because uh, Professor Semmelweis, Ignaz Semmelweis, was a hero, especially with uh, demonstrating that hand washing helps life, which is uh, something very important nowadays. Uh, the title of our presentation is First and Second Waves of COVID-19 in Spain, Italy and elsewhere. And we think that it was very fortunate that uh, Professor Sasso and also Ms. Vicky Zonka put us in between uh, something that has been a first block, which was very epidemiological and very clinical with the next lecture by Alice Street on the social aspects of COVID-19, because we would like to touch on humanistic epidemiology. Just bear with me a second. Let me start by quoting our chancellor, our rector at Autonomous University of Madrid. He was giving this paper in El País, the most influential Spanish newspaper on coronavirus, science and university. And he was saying that this terrible pandemic should provoke a policy change that allows creating a society where education and science are fundamental for development in the face of inequalities. Basically, this is an opportunity to do things better. We don't need to return to the old normality or to the new normality. Science, education and universities, and probably this UNICA is a good step in the right direction, should help to make things better. This is something that already it has been presented before. This is the situation in the European Union, in the extended other Western countries, and in the UK, was with regards to the extent of the pandemic two days ago. This is the two-week moving average of incident cases of COVID-19 per 100,000 population that is considered by the European CDC or the WHO as the best epidemiological indicator for the spread of a pandemic like this one. You could see in dark red color all of Spain, most of France, and also some areas in the Czech Republic, the UK. Hungary in particular is an intermediate color, but also you have to take into account that the threshold that we, they are using here is 120 cases per 100,000. And for instance, here in Madrid, we are experiencing 500 or more cases, and in some, in some neighborhoods, more than 1,500 cases per 1,000. Really, the situation is very serious. And we can get statistics like this, active cases, close cases, the shape, of course. I would like to you pay attention to the number at the top of the chart. 1,049,816 1 deaths up to two days ago. Well, there is a famous quote, one million deaths. One death is a tragedy, one million is a statistic. Scholars divide on who was the creator of this quote. On the right, I'm sure you identify Joseph Stalin. Stalin was the cause of death of not only 20 million civilians in the former Soviet Union, but also he sent to death 20 million Soviet soldiers during the World War II. So he was uh, someone that could be actually thinking that one million deaths is a statistic. Perhaps you don't recognize so much the one in the left. The one in the left is Cromwell. And actually also he massacred 
Irish Catholics during the war with England. And actually, both Professor Ancochea and myself, we cannot disagree more that actually now that more than one million deaths produced by COVID-19 in the world are not only figures, are not only statistics, they bear with them at least one million tragedies. And this is a research that we recently published with some colleagues in Italy and in Germany. Actions by governments save lives. For instance, in this map in Europe, you can identify different colors with actual deaths according to the lockdown date before, during, or after the declaration of pandemic by the WHO on March the 12th. You can see in the map on the right, the mortality observed in countries that declared a national lockdown before the WHO declared a pandemic on March the 12th. And you would see that in these countries, mostly in Eastern Europe, in Greece, and also in Portugal, the mortality was very low. So in public health, quick actions save life. On the contrary, in the middle map, you can see countries that declare a lockdown around the time of the WHO declaration. And there were more deaths, but they are totally different to the map on the left, where you can see that in Italy, in France, in Spain, and in the UK, there were more deaths because the national lockdown was declared after the WHO declaration of pandemic. What we are seeing is this, a wave, but not any wave, a big wave. And this is a painting by the Japanese painter Kanagawa. It is not a tsunami. Kanagawa mentioned that this was the big wave. The artist is showing a big wave that is ready to crash two boats with people. And at the background, you can see the peak of Mount Fuji, the sacred mountain of the Japanese. Well, this is what we experience here, a big wave at the peak of the epidemic on April the 2nd this year, we were observing more than 800 deaths, close to 900 deaths daily due to COVID-19. This wave lasted all April, May, and to the beginning of June. And during most of this summer, there were zero deaths. Now, now in October, we are experiencing another wave, a second wave in Spain and in other countries. It is the responsibility, not only of our governments, but also of us as individuals to change a potential second bin wave to a second little wave. And this is just a comparison of Spain with the country of Professor Sasso. This is what was observed with the first wave in Italy, a country with more than 60 million people that actually were suffering, were suffering 28,000 deaths during the first wave. While in Spain, a country with less population, only 47 million, we experienced 35,000 deaths. The modeling, that we are conducting with the University of Washington in Seattle, the producers every year of the global burden of disease, the GBD, indicates that in the end, by January the 1st, in both countries, we will experience a similar number of deaths, about 60,000. But the curve in dotted line with red color, it says that if we ease the universal measurements for containment, washing our hands, 
the face mask or the social distancing, the number of deaths in Italy could reach 105,000 individuals and the number of deaths in Italy, in Spain could be even more, 100 of 22,000 individuals. In our university and in our hospital, the good thing is that when there is a crisis, it shows the best of all. For instance, in Hospital de la Princesa, every single department tried to help on identifying what could be done to ameliorate this situation. For instance, in pneumology, on the left, you have a photograph. This is a tube containing the lavage of a bronchoscopy. And Pedro Landete, our pneumologist in charge of this first bronchoscopy of an individual with COVID-19, on April Latin, on April the 2nd, he was saying that uh, the bronchial fluid was very thick. It was like a snail snot or a snail slime. And uh, we are using this for some of our research. By the way, especially because humor is very important, even at the times of a pandemic, you can see that in the background of the bronchoscopy tube, there is a bottle of beer, Coronita. And also, other things can help. You probably have read this book by the Nobel Prize Aguardi, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Gabo, the Colombian writer. Perhaps if Gabo were living nowadays, he would have changed the title of his masterpiece and would have called it Love in the Time of Cholera. For instance, Professor Mueller was saying that they had a lot of equipment to use during the first wave. Well, here you have the photo of our residents and our nurses that they, they, they received their protecting equipment. They were so happy that they produce a photo like in a football team. And well, what we need to do is to identify humanism, to look at the social determinants, especially to cope with these times of crisis. For instance, I love opera, and I wonder if some of you speak German and understand this term, Gesamtkunstwerk. This is the German term coined by Richard Wagner about opera. Wagner was saying that if you attend an opera performance, basically you attend all arts, literature, singing, music, architecture, dancing, painting, sculpture. Everything is included in any given opera. And for instance, just in 2012, Cecilia Jimenez created an icon of pop art with the best of her intentions, she wanted to restore a painting of the Ecce Homo and she produced this masterpiece. Well, with this event, there was already an opera open last year. I wonder that very likely, I'm sure there are composers that are already to get topics related to COVID-19 in opera. But these are bad times for opera and for singing, especially because with singing, there is a potential for the spreading the virus similar as with coughing or sneezing. So core practices are a potential threat. But if you cover yourself with a face mask, as in this example, in Morbidity and Mortality Week Reviews, you reduce these chances. So eventually, what Professor Ancochea and myself suggest is what for sure we will survive this second wave and 
other waves of the COVID-19 pandemic, and also there will be other pandemics. To survive well and in good spirits, what we need is to revive arts. And I wonder if some of you have reread some masterpieces of the universal literature. La Peste of the French writer Albert Camus describes a, an outbreak of plague in Alger. Also, Maxwell is talking about an American family suffering in 1918 of the wrongly called Spanish plague, the Spanish flu. Actually, it should be called the 1918 flu. Or for instance, Voltaire is actually given some advice with his book Candide about resilience, about optimism, that we really need it, our patients, but also ourselves to survive the pandemic. Not only everything is reading, in the bottom of the slide, you have the YouTube link to something that tells you that it brings you as close as heaven on earth that you could get. This is the Opus 35, the 35th work by Tchaikovsky. This is the violin concerto in the major. I strongly suggest that in your spare time, check these 55 minutes of music. You will be close to heaven. Dr. Ancochea and myself participate in this international movement, the doctor as a humanist. It is a movement with Dr. McFarland in session of university and also in our Autonomous University of Madrid that wants to bring back the heart and the soul of medicine to medical studies and medical care. In 2017, we had our first symposium in Palma de Mallorca. Last year, in 2019, we had our second symposium in Moscow, hosted by Session of University. We were planning last March to have our third international symposium in Mexico, hosted by Anahuac. Unfortunately, it had to be cancelled due to the first wave of the pandemic, but we have already book that this symposium will be held next year in March 24 to 27 in Mexico City. If you are interested in learning how to apply again the heart and the soul of humanities to medicine, let us know. I would like to finish by quoting this Spanish doctor, Jose Teletamendi and Manjarres. He was a medical doctor during the 19th century, but also he was a writer, he was a violin player, and he was a politician. And he was saying this in Spanish, the doctor that only knows medicine, not even of medicine knows. A medical doctor, he was saying, needs to know many other things, and especially to avoid burnout the arts, languages, history, traveling, basically all humanities will help us to survive this problem and this pandemic. So on behalf of Professor Ancochea, we would like to give you some general concluding remarks. First, that universities face a huge challenge during this ongoing COVID-19 pandemic but we can help. We strongly disagree with the quote, whether it was Stalin, whether it was Cromwell, we disagree. One million deaths are one million tragedies. The bad thing is that there will be more deaths. The good thing is that knowledge, probably produced from university, will help to reduce the burden of COVID-19. Finally, that arts, and other forms of humanism, languages, traveling, even cooking, can help to restore balance now, but especially afterwards this pandemic. Thank you.
Professor Sorianu, thank you very much for your excellent uh, lecture. Uh, and uh, before we uh, move on, I just uh, uh, like to tell you that you can write your question in the chat and uh, the team, the Unica team will collect them 